Hello everyone, welcome back to your own chemistry channel and you are watching DMG chemistry classes and myself Dr. Mahindra Guleria, Associate Professor in Chemistry and in this video I am going to discuss partial molar quantities, a very interesting and very important concept. But before coming on to this topic, if you have not subscribed to my channel then please do subscribe and also like and share my videos. So friends, during discussion of various thermodynamic properties, it was supposed that the system is a closed system and in a closed system the mass or the composition or the number of moles uh, remains constant because in a closed system there is no exchange of mass between the system and the surrounding and the variation of the thermodynamic properties was studied with respect to temperature and pressure only. What in 1907, G. N. Lewis introduced the concept of variation of thermodynamic properties for open system and in this uh, the composition of one or more components was varied. That is, uh, some quantity of a component was added or removed from the system. And obviously, such type of variation uh, uh, can be studied only for the extensive properties because the extensive properties uh, depend uh, depends upon the mass of the system or the quantity of mass uh, present in the system and the value of these properties changes uh, with the change in the mass or the change in the number of moles okay so now let us consider any extensive property it could be your internal energy uh, enthalpy free energy entropy volume etc and it is represented by x okay and suppose the system consists of n constituents and it could be a solution or any heterogeneous system and n1 are the number of moles of the first component or the first constituents first constituent n2 are the number of moles of second constituent n3 are the number of moles of third uh, constituent uh, and likewise okay and as I said, now the system is an open system. Okay, so the property X is the function not only of temperature and pressure, but it will also depend upon the amount of different constituents. That is the number of moles of different constituents. So mathematically, I can write that is uh, that property X is the function of temperature pressure and number of moles of all the constituents and that this is equation number one okay now if there is a small change in temperature pressure and the amount of constituents that is the number of moles of the constituents then the change in the property x will be given by this equation that is dx is equal to where dx is the total change in the uh, value of the extensive property and it will be equal to curly x upon curly t that is the partial derivative of x with respect to temperature and here the pressure is kept constant and number of moles of all the uh, constituents are also kept constant that is the composition is constant into dt plus curly x upon curly p here the temperature is constant and composition is also constant into dp plus curly x upon curly n1 at constant temperature pressure and the number of moles of all the components except first component okay are also kept constant into dn1 plus curly x upon curly n2 at constant temperature pressure and here also the number of moles of all the components other than the second component are kept constant into dn2 so let this is equation number two okay so this first term in the equation number two it gives us the change in the value of x with the change in temperature or when the temperature is changed by a small amount dt and the second term it gives us the change in the value of x okay when the pressure is changed 
or the pressure is changed a very by a very small amount dp likewise this third term gives us the change in the value of x when the composition of the first component is varied or changed composition uh, means that is the number of moles of the first component are changed and here the change in the number of moles is d and 1 okay likewise this term uh, gives us uh, the change in the value of x with the change in the composition of the second component okay now further if the temperature and pressure of the system are kept constant then there will be no change in temperature and the pressure so the dt and dp both will be equal to zero then the equation number two will reduce to the equation number three okay and in equation number three this quantity this quantity in the first term that is curly x upon curly n1 which is the partial derivative of x with respect to n1 at constant temperature pressure and number of moles of other components are also constant this quantity gives us the change in the value of x when one mole of the first component is added to the mixture in such a way that the temperature pressure and the composition it remains constant okay and this quantity is called as the partial molar quantity of the first component and automatically this is for the one mole and when it is multiplied by the dn1 it will give us the change in the value of x for the dn1 moles understood likewise this quantity this quantity okay in the second uh, term it will give us the change in the value of x when the one mole of second component is added to the mixture when uh, uh, in such a way that the temperature or there is no change in temperature pressure and the composition of the system and when it is multiplied by the dn2 then it will give us the change in the value of extensive property when the dn2 moles are added or removed from the system understood so these quantities that is the curly x upon curly n1 and curly x upon curly n2 which are the partial derivatives are called as the partial molar quantities and these are represented by putting a bar over the property concerned so let us write So here this curly x upon curly n1 at constant temperature pressure and number of moles of other components okay other than this first component is n2 n3 and so on remaining constant it is called as a partial molar quantity of first component and it is repeated by x1 bar okay and uh, this curly x upon curly n2 at constant temperature pressure and uh, here all uh, the number of moles of all the components other than the second component will remain constant that's n1 n3 and so on are kept constant temperature and pressure is also constant and it is equal to x2 bar okay and in general for the ith component in general for the ith component we can write that is curly x upon curly ni okay at constant temperature pressure and n1 n2 n3 are also constant and it will be equal to 
xi bar okay so now let us define this partial molar quantity so the partial molar quantity of a component is defined as the partial molar quantity of a component or constituent is defined as is the change in change in the extensive property extensive property of the mixture when one mole of the pure component is added in such a way in such a way that there is no change in there is no change in temperature pressure and composition of the system that is the temperature pressure and composition of the system remains constant okay so now let us write some partial molar quantities so partial molar internal energy okay and it will be equal to curly ui upon curly ni at constant temperature pressure and number of moles and it will be equal to ui bar okay so it will give us the change in internal energy when one mole of the ith component one mole of the ith component is added in such a way that the temperature pressure and the composition of the system remains constant likewise the partial molar enthalpy it will be equal to so e here curly eu okay not i it will be equal to curly h upon curly ni at constant temperature pressure number of moles and it will be equal to hi bar that is the change in the value of enthalpy of the system or the mixture when one mole of the ith component is added in such a way that temperature pressure and composition remains constant then partial molar entropy it will be equal to curly s upon curly ni that is at constant temperature pressure number of moles and it will be equal to si bar then we have partial molar volume it will be equal to curly v upon curly ni at constant temperature pressure number of moles and it equal to vi bar 
and very very important partial molar quantity which is called as partial molar free energy partial molar free energy of the ith component it will be equal to curly g upon curly ni okay and it will be equal to gi bar and this partial molar free energy is also called as the chemical potential and in my next video i will discuss uh, this partial molar free energy or the chemical potential in some detail so keep watching my videos like and share my videos and subscribe my channel thank you very much